Hello there, welcome back to Jenny Designs with Paper. Thank you for stopping by my channel today. I'm working in my 8x8 art journal, so get comfy and let's get crafty. Today I will be working with the Stamperia um, Sea Dreams as part of the Romantic Collection. Um, and I have purchased this um, a bunch of these papers because I just love them. They're amazing, but they're so hard for me to cut up and use. Um, I also purchased an 8x8 sketchbook to use as my art journal for these papers so I don't have to cut them up too much. The actual finished page is like seven inches by seven and three quarter inches to allow for the coil. So I have trimmed it down a little bit, but I will probably at the end have to trim it down just a little more. I also purchased the ephemera pack that goes with this um, pattern paper. And this is like the chipboard ephemera. It's a little bit thicker, kind of like the, the thickness of a, uh, an Amazon box, you know, a cardboard box. I've pulled out some archival ink and some stencils, and we're just going to get working. Um, I'm leaving this video in mostly real time. I think I sped up when I used my heat tool at one point, but everything else is in real time. And I figured, you know, we'll just chat or, you know, I'll chat and you'll mute me or listen, whichever suits your fancy. So the first thing I'm doing is taking some, it's a, a sepia color of archival ink, and I'm using a blender foam to go around the edge of that page. That kind of creates a frame, but it also blends in the parts of the page that I had to trim down, so they're not quite as noticeable. Um, I've pulled out my, um, this stencil is the Crafters Workshop Art Is. It is a script stencil, and I have a green archival ink. This is called Library Green, and an ink blending foam. And I'm going to push some of the ink on this foam through that stencil. Now, you will not see any words. Like, it does not actually make words. This stencil actually is much more effective when you are using, um, like, a texture paste if you want the look of actual words. Um, here I'm putting my grip mat. So this is the, uh, I think it's, Oh, who made this? Tim Holtz, Tonic Studio, something like that. Um, it's a grip mat, and it prevents my paper from sliding around on my glass work surface. So I can um, put a little bit more pressure through that stencil and get a little bit better of an impression. Now, I am not going for actual words. If I wanted a script font or actual the look of actual words, I would have used one of my many um, scripty stamps. I am just looking to add some green into this background. Now my color palette is kind of this um, cream or vanilla color that is in the background paper. The ephemera pieces have white and blue and a tiny bit of green. So I've got my gallon pint quart scenario going on here. Um, the gallon color is probably the blue. Um, well gosh, looking at the page, if you discount the cream because it is a neutral, the gallon color is the blue, the pint or the quart color is the, the white and the gray on the ephemera pieces. And then the, the smallest amount, the, the pint is the green. So that's why I kind of chose some green to go into the background. Now, so I put um, the green ink through that um, art is script stencil. And then I've chosen my dilutions um, small bubble stencil to kind of add some bubble groupings. Um, the first one I did down on the bottom right there, I put it exactly right there because my blending foam went off the edge of my stencil and created a boo-boo. But you know, this is how we fix things. So I'm also going to add some of those bubbles with the sepia ink. This is the same color ink that I went around the page. It is a very similar color ink to the, um, or the tone in the background. And you can see this background paper has a little bit of like a, an ink splat or something like that. It's very much in the background. It's not hardly even noticeable. But I'm just going to add some more groupings or add to the groupings of bubbles with my sepia ink. And then I will do the same thing with that Art Is stencil. I will pull it forward or pull it back out and add some um, of the sepia ink through that stencil. Again, you're not going to see words. It just adds um, texture and layers to the background. Um, I did pull out my blue. This is cobalt blue. I have a cobalt blue ink. And I did pull out the cobalt blue ink as well. And that gave me actually a really good 
um, like you can actually see the word, like you can tell that they're script words, not just um, fragments or texture. You can actually see that they're supposed to be letters, which I thought was interesting that the cobalt blue ink, I don't know, they're the same ink, different size pads, same ink blending foam. I don't know if I pushed a little harder or if I, I'm not sure what I did differently with the blue ink, but definitely you can tell that they're supposed to be letters. But again, you can't read it. It's not meant to be there to be in, um, visible. It's just background. I also want to add some washi tape. So I dug through my washi tape drawer and I mean drawer, it is like a 12 by 14 inch drawer of washi tapes. <laughs> um, I have this really, it's like a three or two and a half inch wide roll of washi tape that is a map and it is on kind of a brown, um, old paper colored background. I am not sure why I tore off so much. I rolled it out so you can see the print. I don't know why I tore off that much, but whatever it's washi tape. <laughs> We're going to use it up. I'm going to create kind of the two corners of a square kind of thing. So I'm tearing a smaller strip of this wide paper down and I'm putting it um, horizontally in the bottom right corner and vertically in the top left corner. Um, I will add other layers of washi tape. Um, this is my standby when I feel like my page needs more layers, but I didn't have a plan for more layers. I wanted to be careful of the layers on my page because the ephemera that I'm using is a little bit thicker than just cardstock. I mean, it's quite a bit thicker than cardstock, it's chipboard. So I wanted to be careful about the number of layers I added, but it still felt like it needed something. So I've taken that blue washi tape and tore it in half as well. And I'm leaving those raw edges showing. I like the torn raw edge here. Um, they are not straight lines. It is imperfect. And that's good for my brain to think about because I get hung up on perfect and symmetrical and making it look matchy matchy. So having raw torn lines is a good plan for me. Um, the skinny green tape I am using to kind of um, be my third layer in that, um, I don't know what the right word is there, um, collage of washi tapes. Collage is not the right word, but you know, the conglomeration of washi tapes. Um, now I'm going to take that map tape again, and I'm going to tear some paste, some pieces, some pieces. Words are hard, y'all. Words are hard. And it has been a busy few weeks in my house, like in my life, and it's making my brain a little bit on the tired side. So this time I'm going vertical in the bottom right, and I've torn that map piece really skinny, and so I'm working on a skinnier piece or working with a skinnier piece of that dark blue tape, and then I'll use the green tape as the top layer in that um, pile for lack of a better word. I did tear it a little bit too to kind of give it that raw edge, but it was really hard to tear that skinny tape. It took me a minute. It took me a minute. And um, I did not tear the top one. It was just not worth tearing that little green skinny tape. But I did like the raw edge. Um, so in the top left corner, I'm gonna go horizontally this time. I'm going to add a layer of the map um, washi and it's gonna go horizontally. This does kind of create um, a focal image frame or a, a, a place to, for your brain to be. So there's this place inside these kind of half hashtags or these registration marks, whatever you want to call them, that is the focal point. And then there's space outside of them. So your eyes and your brain have a place to rest as well, if that makes sense. Now, washi tape is not a very permanent um, adhesive. So I'm going to go over this with my clear gesso. Um, I do need to move my um, little mat there. I don't want to get it all sticky. I don't know if it would wash very well. So I'm just going to take my brush and my clear gesso and go over the top of this. It will help the washi tape stick. Um, it also creates a non-porous surface because again, I haven't quite completely decided what I'm doing to the rest of my background and might I need a non-porous surface to create some shadow and dimension? I might because yeah, I don't know yet. 
Now the ephemera pieces that came that are in this collection have a shiny finish and I'm looking at my page while I do the voiceover and I did not put any clear gesso on them. And I think that probably I should have before I photographed it. It was really difficult to photograph because of that shine. And I might go back and add some clear gesso to it just to take away that shine. But I don't know, we'll see, I haven't decided yet. So here is the only part of the video that I fast forwarded. I'm gonna heat set that. It's eight, eight times normal speed in case you're wondering. And the page is dry. So my major focal piece is this orca with the kind of flower cluster around its dorsal fin. Looks like it's jumping out of the ocean. I have a little flower cluster I'm gonna put down here in the bottom right. I have a couple of other flowers, but I also have some starfish. So one is a very um, thin, skinny, blue, white starfish. And the other one is kind of a brown starfish. And I thought maybe I could offset and layer those to kind of create some dimension. Um, the other two little flowers, I don't know if I will actually use. I'm kind of liking this composition here. I thought maybe I could put them in the upper right corner of the page, but for right now, I need to add something to indicate movement. And I have this Ellen Hudson Circles stamp set, and it was sitting on my desk, so it became the thing that I used to create that movement. So I'm going to take that largest cluster of circles. It's like a like you're doodling circles, like with the old spirograph or something. You remember that toy that we had when we were kids that my kids have that I like to pull out and use sometimes? <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and use that cluster of circles and just a good old fashioned stamp block. I'm gonna figure out which side the grid is on my stamp block because the stamp won't stick very well to that. I am going to ink that up with that sepia archival ink. Archival ink is waterproof, so once it is on the page and dry, I can add other things to it, including liquid mediums, and it will not bleed or smudge or blend or anything like that. So I'm gonna start with a circle or a clumping, a grouping of circles right here in the middle. It is very difficult to see, which was why I used the sepia ink. I did not want it to be um, too eye-catching. I am going to overlap. So I put a second circle here and then at the last minute I grabbed a post-it note to put down to kind of cover that up. Um, I did that a couple of times with these circle stamps and I decided I didn't like it and it wasn't necessary. Um, it it kind of made it look more like a flower than indication of, of motion. So after using that post-it a couple of times, I just skipped that step and just started stamping um, the circle um, in a grouping or a clump on my page there, kind of in the center, kind of down toward the, the bottom right-hand corner under where those little leaves are gonna go. And I did a couple of second and third generation stamping just to get um, varying um, darknesses in the ink. So I inked up the stamp and I made sure I pushed really hard this time so that I could get a nice bold circle. And then without inking up, I stamped off again and that gave me a much um, more delicate circle. And I kept stamping this time until nothing came off, till all of the ink was off of the stamp or at least none of it would stamp on the paper. I decided to ink it up one more time and do that again. I couldn't decide where I wanted to put that first really bold stamp down, but I went for that bottom corner and then just kind of added. And these um, kind of doodled circles add to the motion of the idea that this orca is jumping out of the water. It kind of creates a circular motion. And I felt like that was a good, a good place to stop adding layers. So the only thing left to do now is figure out, I shouldn't say the only thing, the thing to do now is to figure out where my ephemera is going to be and whether or not I'm going to use those two little flowers up in that top corner, which I decided were unnecessary. Um, I did decide to move that cluster of starfish up to the left corner and pull the orchid down just a little bit. That kind of, that makes the, my focal images go in kind of a diagonal from left to right, kind of the direction that we read. So I felt like that worked. I am going to use my Tombow Mono Glue all over the back of these um, ephemera pieces. I needed a really strong adhesive. I could have used like a double-sided, a really strong double-sided adhesive, but the glue's on my desk. 
as opposed to in my desk drawer, you know, six inches to my right, but whatever. I am going to add some stamp blocks to the top of this to kind of um, hold it down. Sorry if you can hear extra noise. My kids are home today. We have Good Friday off in our school district. So we have a four day weekend this weekend, actually. I am going to make my starfish cluster with the lighter one on the bottom, which works really well on this grouping of dark colored washi tapes, actually. If I had gone ahead and put it down in that bottom right hand corner, you would not have been able to see that lighter starfish as well. And then with my tweezers, I put a little, well, I put a little clump of glue in the middle of that light starfish. And then with my tweezers, I added the brown starfish to the top. I moved my stamp blocks over to kind of add a little pressure to the starfish. And I'm going to go ahead and add this already put together um, collage of blue and white flowers down at the bottom. And I'm going to add yet another pile of stamp blocks. You know, with the mystery and the invention of stamping, stamping platforms, my stamp blocks get less love than they used to. But, you know, I use them as weights when I need to hold something down. The inside cover of this pattern paper has some like word blocks and sentiments and stuff. And I feel like because we have the circles and that circular motion on our page, um, I'm going to use one of these ovals. And the one I chose says individually we are one, or we are one drop. Together we are an ocean. And so I'm going to go ahead and trim that out. I um, chose to trade my scissors there. Um, when you're doing fussy cutting, the thinner the blade the scissors have, the better cut you get. A couple of tips with um, fussy cutting. Use thin blade scissors and move, hold the scissors in your dominant hand and the paper in your non-dominant hand and turn the paper, not the scissors. When I remember to move the paper and hold my scissors with the point staying the same direction, I have a much cleaner cut. It's less jagged. It keeps its shape better. So this piece was kind of an irregular oval. I probably could have found an oval die to cut it out with, but that's okay. I would have had to tear the cover off the paper pad and I wasn't ready to go there yet. Um, I did go ahead and ink blend around the edge of it with my green, that um, library green ink and my ink blending foam. And I needed to pull it off the background of the page a little bit. Ultimately, I don't think that this was enough. Um, once I moved my stamp blocks and added that to the background, it just felt like it blended in a little too much still. So I dug through my cardstock scraps on my desk and I found this piece of, it's a dark forest green cardstock. I'm going to glue this oval down and then I will go ahead and fussy cut around it, leaving a really small border. Again, it is not perfectly cut. It is... If I want, you know, if I wanted perfection, I could have, I could have found a, a die. I have dozens of oval dies in my die stash, but I just went ahead and cut this out with my little, um, these are, um, Fisker's scissors, I think. Fisker's? American Craft? Honeybee or honey, I don't remember. They're not Honeybee, that's a stamp company. I don't remember who makes these scissors but they're really fine bladed and they have a really nice tip and they work really well for fussy cutting and they have a cover on it that protects the tip from getting broken off, which I love that too. That way I can just leave them in my tool caddy on my desk and they're right at, um, right at fingertip range. Okay. So once I have that trimmed out, I'm going to go ahead and clean up that bottom edge a little bit and that pulls it off the page just enough. Again, that green is still the smallest amount of color on my page, but backing our little sentiment block or our little quote block with that green, um, it, it was perfect. That was the right call. 100% that was the right call. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this down and hold it in place for a minute. Um, what, is, what was my next plan? Oh, my next plan. Sorry, I forgot what I did next is to put it into my journal. So here is a quick flip through of the pages I've made in this journal using Stamparia papers. Some of them were just um, cutting up the background paper and using it, and some of it were using the ephemera. It just all kind of depended on what I was in the mood for. So the papers in this um, book are really quite lightweight. It's more of a sketch pad. I think it does have mixed media paper, but it's not a thick mixed media paper. 
So normally I take two pages and glue them together with um, this collage glue stick. This, um, what's it called? Uh-oh. Yoohoo. Yoohoo. It's called Yoohoo, not uh-oh. <laughs> but I am going to go ahead and smear glue all over that page and then stick it to the page in front of it. Um, eventually I will have to open up those spirals a little bit and take out some of the paper. It's just the pages are going to become too thick, especially with these thicker pieces of ephemera. All right, so now that my pages are glued together, or the pages in the book are glued together, I can add my art journal page. And it is still a little bit long, and that's okay. I have a plan for that. I'm just going to pull out my Fisker's trimmer and trim off like um, a quarter of an inch-ish. I didn't really measure, like with a ruler measure. I just eyeballed on my page measured. <laughs> so I'm going to hold that up, and it's going to be okay. I am going to go ahead and pull out that um, sepia ink pad and blending foam again. Um, the blending foam did not have quite enough ink in it, but I made it work. So we're going to go ahead and ink blend that bottom edge again, just because um, I cut it off, right? I did need to, I lied, I didn't make it work. See you guys, I just made this page today. I made this page and then I ate lunch and then I did the voiceover and I already forgot what I did. I know. My brain is on its tired side. Okay, anyway, I'll stop complaining about my brain. Um, we're going to go ahead and glue this down. The fir um, first part of the adhesive I'm going to use is some really strong double-sided tape. This is um, tape and tear, tear and tape, sequin tape. Wherever you buy it depends what they call it, but it's really strong and you can tear it. You don't have to cut it. And I like that. I don't like having to hold the adhesive down and use a pair of scissors because let's face it, I'm not always coordinated enough to do that. I'm just not. So we're going to go ahead and put a frame of this really strong double-sided adhesive on the edges as close to the edge as I can get it to keep the page down. And then I will add some, once I have removed the backing paper or the um, release paper on the back of all of this, these strips of tape, um, which is really easy as well. I just make sure that the corners are burnished down and then I grab my pokey tool or a pair of scissors, the tip of scissors, and um, just poke, pull it right off. Um, my dog thinks she needs to come in here and see me because I'm talking. I don't even know why. I am like her least favorite person in the house, but because I'm talking, she thinks she needs to come in and say hi. Whatever. <sighs> um, anyway, back to my page. Taking the release paper off with my pokey tool, and then I'm going to um, pick up that Tombow Mono glue, and I will put liquid glue through the rest of the back of the page. The double-sided adhesive gives it an instant stick, like an instant hold, and that double-sided glue gives it a really firm hold. I could have put double-sided tape through the middle, like, you know, an X pattern or whatever, but the glue's easier. Let's face it, the glue's easier. So I'm just going to bump this right up to the underneath edge of those coils, just putting it down enough to make sure that the page will still flip when my book is closed. And I'm just going to hold that in place for a couple of seconds. And I thought about, ooh, there was one corner that I wasn't sure was going to stick down. But then I'm going to um, write my name and date it. I'm dating it March because I did create this page in March. It is still March, right? Like for a few more days. Okay, it is still March. And that's, the, that's my whole page. So I think um, all in all, this page took me about an hour to create. But that was trying things and, you know, the stuff that I didn't use, I edited out. And also fussing at my dog and my children. So here is a hard to see photograph. I was trying to eliminate the shiny spots on that ephemera. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy my video today, please give it a thumbs up so the algorithm will continue to recommend that to other people. Leave me a comment down below. Tell me if you've ever purchased anything from Stamperia. And I hope you have a really fabulous day.